for me that I found was people. It was connecting with people. It was connect, creating team and creating that experience at work. I couldn't necessarily, I'm going to use air quotes, force people to walk through the doors <laughs> when it first opened, uh, but I could create a really amazing experience for the team members and connect them to what they were doing. And once we did that, the people came. And so it was this really beautiful experience. And so we took that store from one of the you know, lower performing stores to one of the highest performing stores in the system uh, in about seven years. And it still is to this day, which is very cool. Um, and then, you know, us as partners sat down and said, okay, well, like, how do we replicate this now in 12 stores? <laughs> how do we take yeah. this from one store and, and, and make this a thing across the entire organization? So it was at that point that I moved into the role of culture and leadership development and started to kind of reframe my thoughts around, okay, we can do this on an individual store level, but how do we now take all of this learning and make it organizational? And so, yeah, so that's kind of how that all evolved. I mean, there's a lot of little stories in and around that, but it was, it was quite the adventure, <laughs> let me tell you, uh, and really shifting my thinking, right, through all of those years and continuing to up-level the way the way I saw leading, the way I saw business, the way I saw team, people, all of that. Yeah. You know, and I find it fascinating, like when you say you have this individual store, but now how do we replicate it? But the where you have to zero in on is that leading self framing how you came at it. But how do we take individuals who maybe have not been exposed to professional and personal development and be able to show them that it starts with them. So I would love to see or share you for you to share how you were able to tap into it because some people have some level of personal development, you know, but I find that maybe as a coach or being a leader in an organization that not everyone has been exposed to that until they've come into an organization that's a learning organization and how to really invite them into this new realm. Yeah. And I, I also, you're probably going to nod your head, but I also find there's a lot of resistance at first too, right? So if somebody comes yeah. into a learning organization and that's not what they knew, their immediate response is resistance to that change, right? And so I definitely felt and navigated through a lot of different <laughs> circumstances. I mean, obviously everybody was different, um, but I think for me, uh, my kind of way in or helping people start to learn in, ooh, let me re-articulate my words there, <laughs> my kind of way of helping people lean in to what it might look like to develop um, was to start small. So it was to start somewhere like, here's a, here's a couple, here's a little workshops on some tactics on how you can lead yourself, how you can show up differently at work, how you can create a better experience for yourself. Because I think when people see, I always say we have to lead ourselves first, but when people start to feel that it changes everything for them. Right. And then they start to get inspired to like share that with other people and help other people have that experience. So, um, I see you nodding a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. Cause one of the things that comes to my mind is when, you know, there's been a few people that, you know, I think it's because we've been in a conditioned environment where we need permission for so many things. And, you know, I recently talked about it on the most recent podcast and it was, why are we waiting for permission for someone to tell us to lead ourselves? Yet when we do move ahead with conviction to say, no, I'm in charge of me, let me make decisions that it is a game changer when people feel empowered to really be themselves and share their ideas and really grow with an organization. So if you have a scenario or a story you can share, I would love for you to just share an example of someone who's shifted. Cause when we, when you talk about that resistance, Ali, you know, I, I think of there's the early adopters and they're, they're going to be gung ho. They're going to jump in anytime. And then we have the late adopters. They're like, Oh, what's in it for me. Let someone else put their toe in the water first before I, I engage in this because I'm not so sure, you know, and that's, not, and it's funny because they're thinking that they're not trusting the people who are leading them, but actually I find it's that they don't trust themselves in this scenario. So I'll let you take it from there. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that's actually, yeah, I think that's a really good question because especially if somebody's listening to this and they're a leader and they work with a team and they face this resistance, it can be a very real situation that they're facing right now, right? And the development and growth of our people is, it's crucial, it's pivotal to the growth of our organizations and to the success we want to see. Success is built on development for sure. Like I have no, no doubts about that. And so, you know, like I think there have been a lot of experiences where people have faced that resistance. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a story about myself <laughs> facing that resistance because we all will face it too. It's not that leaders won't face it either. Um, and I think I faced a lot of resistance when I first moved out of that individual store level leadership and into the organizational level leadership um, kind of role. And I couldn't shift my thinking. Like I couldn't shift my thinking from what it looked like to work with you know, an individual person to now working with a team and sharing a message that way. And so for me, working through that process, a couple of things happened. Number one was I always had a peer group um, that I could speak to. So when I was facing those challenges, like, oh, I don't know how to do this. I don't like, I can't wrap my mind around what it would look like to speak to a team in this way or to share this message. Cause I know it's powerful, but I can't like articulate it yet. Um, having somebody to talk to was huge for me. So I think if, if people are facing resistance, talking to other people in an organization, talking to your, your leader, even hopefully you have the safety and trust to do that, but just to say, Hey, like I'm, I'm struggling with this. And a lot of times it's maybe because we don't know the why, or we don't understand what it looks like in a bigger picture or a bigger sense. And then the other thing for me too, was just continued learning. So um, moving through those moments of resistance, um, when I really faced them, I always said to myself, okay, there's something I need to learn here. And it was, and I said, it's on me. And so when we can take responsibility for our own growth and development, like it's great to be in an organization that values learning, right? Like we all love that, but you're not always going to be there. And there's gonna be times in your life where you're out doing your own thing and if you don't value learning and development for yourself and your life, well, then we can get stagnant, right? And so I always said to myself, well, there's probably a growth edge here. There's probably something I need to learn. I'm not quite getting this right. And so I would just go out and discover. I would take a program on my own. I would read a book. I would listen to your podcast, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> something that just would trigger some thinking for me and help me move through that resistance. I don't know. Do you know who um, Todd Herman is? No. He's like peak performance athlete guy. So he works with like Olympians and stuff, but he talks about, um, I really liked this theory. He talks about how our brains have this ow response or this wow response to change, right? Mm -hmm. So either it's like, ow, I freaking hate this or wow, I love <laughs> it. And so for me, I've always thought in my brain ever since I heard that, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to have ow sometimes. Sometimes I'm going to be like, this sucks and I don't want to do this, yeah. but how do I start to shift to wow? Right. How do I start to say, oh, this is an adventure or I'm excited about this or this is an opportunity for me. And so I think the power in coaching, we both know this has really helped make those shifts for me. And I think for leaders, if you're working with other people and they're facing resistance, coaching and asking questions that could help them move from a closed mindset to an open mindset could be really powerful as well. It's a game changer because, <laughs> you know, I had a project that I was working on and there was some resistance, you know, they were a late adopter. And one of the things that I was just like, I don't understand, you know, we, we really want to move through this resistance. And I wasn't didn't know what to do. Because you know, sometimes that there's some negative talk on the side, and it starts trickling into the people who are adopting. And my experience was, um, to really stop, take a step back and really move into a place of curiosity. Like you said, okay, this is an adventure. This is a challenge in front of me might feel like an obstacle, but maybe not. And let me have fun with this. Let me get really curious to understand why that person is resisting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was able to shift it and reframe it when I had a conversation with them. And I said, okay, vent, you got two minutes. Just let me have it. Okay. And, you know, they were talking about, you know, just historic, historics, whether change will happen and things like that. And, and those are valid, completely valid and really need to validate those people's opinions. But then I said, okay, you're done. Two minutes is up. What's the solution? 
because often what happens is when someone's resisting, they also carry the solution. And I might not be able to implement it right away, but I can take it and use it as, you know, to create my meal kind of thing, create the meat on the plate per se, to really dive in and make something great, mm-hmm. you know, because they're not expressing it in the way of the ideal. So that was my experience with resistance. That's I have that one particular story that it just it was transforming. And then what I've learned in that experience was some of the toughest people that you work with are your greatest teachers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, I would love to, you know, you've shared how you move through resistance. You know, one of the things that always reflecting on self, like you said, you know, and being able to have peers that you can talk to about the situation. And that's what ha- helped me as well is when I talk to the peer, they're like, take a different approach. And I'm like, okay, obviously I got to do a shift here. Oh. And now when I come up to resistance, I get excited. I never was excited initially. I was just like, oh, here we go again, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's actually one of our greatest teachers. Yeah. I also think like if we, um, you were talking about, you know, how you help people make that shift. Like what's the opportunity you can complain for two minutes, but what's the opportunity. I think that's so important that you pointed out. And I just want to hone in on that because if we stay in the complaining, we strengthen that neural pathway. Right. And so shifting out, like, it's okay to get it out, but like, (laughs) let's shift out of that. Because if we stay there, we're going to really strengthen that muscle. This is going to get harder and harder to move out of it for us. Right. So I think there's important, like, I love this part of the conversation because we're just bringing awareness to what happens. And so people can actually think of, I will say, if we become aware, we then have a choice, (laughs) right? But if we're unaware, we're just unaware. There's nothing we can do about it. So starting to understand, I think is super important. So I love, I love that you brought that up too. And, and you know, the stages of change, you know, when we talk about for Chastas, I know we're getting a little bit theoretical here for all of you listening, but people cannot move into change until they have the awareness that change needs to happen. 